No, not yet. Okay. And we're live. We're just talking. Do we have an intro? Oh. I um welcome to Small Town World. Um <laughs> I actually started doing an intro and that was on my list to do. Um, I think it was supposed to be yesterday, and then I ended up taking the day off because I was like, you know what? I heard I had some crazy stuff happening over the last uh few few days, like with my body and and just stress related and i was just like we'll have an intro from ray yeah, there you go. i have some pictures and some video picked out it's just a question of music and and like do we do words do we not do we what do we do uh, <laughs> so yes but i had fun i read two whole books both a small town so in a mood for this uh, right now. And I may have started something with the word wish in its name. (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, I may have started, you know, a little something with some little graphic kind of things on the front that also a small town (laughs) <laughs> on that note welcome everybody to small town world um we are tiffany and Nian. i'm gonna let me introduce herself we like building small towns and coming up with all the different people that reside in those small towns and we thought we would get together and share what it is that we do uh we are both <laughs> published authors now. <laughs> yeah, I can um, say that. Because uh, that's what I've been hinting at. I did actually start Nia's new release uh, that I'm totally going to butcher the name, so I'm going to let her say it. <laughs> the Art of Wishcraft. <laughs> oh, I wasn't going to butcher the name. <laughs> no, you got it. You got it. See? Hey. Well, you've told us all the wish... Title. Yeah, I have to guys a lot. This one was, and that was the one that was in my head. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I published under T. L. Russ as well as Desiree with my co-author uh, Desiree M. Ortega. Um, if you have not joined us before, we do this a little bit more like a podcast uh, in that we're live and we sit around, kind of talk. Uh, I don't put up everybody's comments or or anything. Um, we just kind of go through all the different things. If you would like to ask a question, be sure to put a Q, capital Q, or a question capitalized in the comments. And then we take like the last 10 to 15, <laughs> 35 um, minutes and we answer everybody's questions um, as best as we can and to, you know, let you guys in on a little bit of how our brains work because (laughs) they're great places to visit. Don't know if you all want to live there. Um, So Nia, take it away. and I am Nia the Vixen of Fiction all over the internet. I stream over on Twitch in the middle of the day. You can catch me usually on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I also stream here on YouTube at 7.30 p.m. on Tuesday nights for Tuesday night right at the Book Cafe. Um, It's a good time. I am a published author. I do publish under a pen name, but that is my fun, smexy stuff that I do over there, I say. But um, codename Penny. And, uh, but now I'm published under um, N.V. James, and it's The Art of Witchcraft is the first book. The next one comes out, um, I think, the first or second week of May, and then June will be another. And there is a free short coming if you are subscribed to my newsletter you'll get the free short that i'm really excited Love about it. yeah um and we do have sky winter in the chat who also started something with the word wish too <laughs> so what a coinky dink i know um, <laughs> <laughs> so yay and regina's back yay groceries ordered i love nice. it um So today we are going to be talking all about the businesses that are in your small town. Um, And this is uh, kind of, I feel like 
Nia's wheelhouse. <laughs> um, because Nia loves to start, like she's just, she's in a world, she's in a town, she's in a zone, she's in a space. She's enjoying, she's building all these things. She's having so much fun. And then she's like, oh yeah, it needs people. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta start telling the people stories that live in this town. Yes. Um, um, I'm more like, oh, I've got these great people. Where should I put them? <laughs> <laughs> these guys are amazing. Where do go? Uh, <laughs> so, uh, now I don't know about you, Nia when you start with your world building, because when I start with my world building, because I do start more so with people, I kind of start with where would they work? Mm -hmm. <laughs> How do you get into like figuring out the businesses that a small town need? Um, more of who works here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As I'm, as I'm building the world, I start thinking about the people who live in the world little by little, but more it's um, what is the event? What are the events of the world? And then I'm like, Ooh. who do these events affect um, that are going on within the world? And then of the people who are affected, I'm like, well, maybe this one's a carpenter. Maybe this one's an artist. Um, maybe this one is a this or that. And then um well where do they like to go Ooh, they like to frequent this place and then i'm like well i need someone who works there you know because who do they talk to who do they see every morning when they go for their morning coffee or who do they see on their way to um for their morning walk who hangs out in the park so i have these mm -hmm. places that start developing in my head and then i'm like the place would be very scary and lonely <laughs> If there were no people, if you came upon a beautiful town and there were no people, it would be strange. <laughs> so we got to fill it up with people and all the people have interesting stories. They just do. I love that. Um, so, okay. Do you start, because that almost feels like you start with the smaller places first, like kind of the coffee shop or the schools or um, <laughs> I love Regina. No people go zombie apocalypse. Go! <laughs> <laughs> oh no! I mean, that's a story in and of itself. It could be. Uh, <laughs> but like, do you start with say like the um the like the church, the the a bar, or do you start more so with like um? what's the main thing that's keeping the town running? Whether I, it's a winery or the corporation or the um, that kind of like like starts, vineyard or, or yeah. an orchard or something like that. Those things start kind of start falling into place. Like um, if I come up with, I'm like, okay, I really want to write a story about um, about a Christmas tree farm or a tree farm or something like that. So I start thinking what's around the tree farm, who works at the tree farm, where is this tree farm? And so the world just kind of like starts developing around the tree farm, if that makes sense. Yeah. If, I'm, if I'm starting, I'm trying to keep it small town because I also do sci-fi and fantasy. So I'm like, Small town. Keep a small town. Not an asteroid crashing into the moon. Okay, so <laughs> so we start with our Christmas tree farm. Um, and then where is this location? Because, you know, Christmas tree farms, depending on where you're at, you might get different types of trees. And I literally think mm -hmm. about all of these things. Um, and I'm like, well, if there's not an event, there has to be some kind of event for me to even start thinking about that. So I've already got whatever event is going to be affecting this place. And now it's an event that's affecting a Christmas tree farm. Um, maybe it's going to be a mudslide or something, you know, very, you know, very um, dramatic that's happening to this to this area. And it's maybe that's the, the tree farm is what is, you know, making the town work that's where the money is coming mm. in whatever it might be this event's happening and i'm like who are the people 
who are affected, obviously the people who work there, the owner. And so I start filling mm-hmm. in people for whatever the event is that that's happening. And then, well, they have to have a town to live in or something, even if it's a one road town, you know, mm-hmm. and then who works there and where do they get their food? Do, do they have a gathering place? And it just literally starts spreading out from there. And then as I start thinking of the places, I'm like, well, we're going to have our basics. We're going to have a diner or a restaurant of some sort, even, even if it's the smallest of small towns, there's even the smallest of small towns has a one stop shop you know what i mean i i live in north carolina <laughs> i've seen these you run through and you're like there was a store that was the town and you missed it because you drove by the one store um right and it's the store and the restaurant and there's maybe a couple of little gas pumps you know what i mean it's everything you you so every town has something the basics um and you don't have to name all of those basics you just start with what you need. So if you want to have a love interest, maybe she's coming into town, maybe she's uh, driving through. She doesn't even mean to stop there. She gets a flat tire. There's only one shop. And one side is the restaurant. One side is the gas station. And in the middle is a grocery store, whatever, you know. And so that's where she ends up. And she runs into the farmer of the Christmas tree place that just got wiped out. And he's trying to, you know, recover and you know what I mean so they Mm -hmm. you know and that that's literally how my stories come along (laughs) I love that I we might be a touch similar in that respect because I tend to a lot of my towns have something like you said like the tree farm a lot of my towns have something that kind of is the anchor if you will Mm -hmm. um whatever that might be um you know whether it's a corporation or a uh, you know, like a farm or, or whatever. There's something that's the anchor. Uh, and then it kind of grows out from there. But I think the difference between us is once I know the anchor, I start to think, where can, where would that be? Which I think you said. And then I start Googling small towns around that area to see what they have. I, and then I'm I like, oh, they have this. That sounds good. Oh, they have that. That sounds good. (laughs) And then the other thing I do when I pick out the area and I start thinking of what this small town might be similar to, um, I'll look, I'm like, if I want a small town that's going to be in, um, let's say, Louisiana, I -hmm. will look for... I'll just literally look on the map and be like, huh, this has some water near it. I like that. Yeah. It's got some grassy tree. Air. Okay. What's around here? Okay. We're going to set our place in our fictional place in this location. We're just going to jerry rig it in. It doesn't really exist. It's fine. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I go look at the um, Google Maps of it. And then if I will then go to YouTube and see if anyone has done a walkthrough yes. or a tour, and I will walk through that town and do the little tour. I Almost every time. It. Almost every time. Is I want to get really tour. fun too. Have you ever done like, okay, Peach Ridge is in Georgia. I just went and I looked up like best small towns in Georgia. And it just gave me like the top 10 places people visit Mm -hmm. in Georgia that were considered small towns. So it was able to help me kind of figure out which one sounded like the right place to be. (laughs) I I have gone through um, about probably six or seven towns up in the Connecticut, Massachusetts area Mm -hmm. uh, just to see the different types of buildings so I could know which kind of which kind of buildings do I want to go with? Do I want yes. to go with structure buildings or do I want to go with more of the brick buildings or do I want to do some combination? Um, and I, literally that's how I decide that my my buildings are going to be mostly brick with a few of those more mm-hmm. wood structures. But I want more of the small town row, row community house building mm-hmm. things. So... Yeah. And, well, that, also, and I, I made that decision by going through several of them and saying, oh, this is nice. This is nice. Mm-hmm. These are more separated. These are more together. This is a nice combination. And I'm like, that's that's what I like. A combination with more bricks um, yeah. together in a row. 
And it also, it gives you, especially if you do like the walkthroughs or the videos of some sort, even if you just Google like images of houses around there, it mm -hmm. does give you an idea of what the buildings then need to look like. So yep. you don't have like, I don't know, crazy log cabins in like a, a North Carolina <laughs> or I mean like a, a New Jersey type of area, you yeah. know, because they would be like, why are there log cabins? Yeah. <laughs> or certain types of ranch house, ranch style houses or mid-century modern houses that are very popular in one area, but they would mm -hmm. not work in, in the area. It would be the standout house. It's not that there never is one. Um, right. Because you will find log cabin a couple, but there's so few. But you're more likely to find that in the mountain area. And then even still, it's it's not like a lot. So that that example is exactly right. Mm -hmm. But also um, here here as you, as you move towards the coast and along the rivers, you'll see houses that are raised up those houses that are raised up mm -hmm. where you drive and park underneath of them, you'll see a lot of that in the coastal areas here. Um, and not only in the coastal areas though, a lot of the areas that are along rivers um, where that tend to have a tendency to flood will also do that. So, and you would, you'll know that just by, you know, taking a drive through a community. And you'll be like, oh, that's not the house I thought it was. I was going to put a Spanish, an 80s Spanish style house here. That's going to look weird. You know? You know what you made me think of? Too? Well, you made me think of two things when you were talking about that. Number one, we actually have a house in our neighborhood. And it, it takes my father to talk about it because <laughs> um, apparently, like, I wasn't living back home um, or even back in Missouri at that time. But uh, apparently, they had a fire. And like the house burned all the way down. And so insurance paid them and they, you know, decided to rebuild. And when they rebuilt, when I tell you, my father's like, what, what is wrong with them? Did they not look at any of the other houses around here? Why would they think that fed in? Like, what, why? They just right. ruined everybody's property values. They did this. <laughs> like he goes into a whole zone of yep. why this house is not the house that should be in our neighborhood. But the other thing that you made me think of is um, when you were talking about the, uh, the houses that are raised, Another good thing when you are thinking of the businesses that go into your town, look at like where your town is set. You're not going to like if you put a town that's coastal, a lot of times you may have like fishing type of businesses or seafood type of places or, you know, um, tourism, if you will. And so look at those type of things as well when you're thinking of your uh, businesses that go in the town because I don't think a lot of people sometimes we get this idea and we're like oh my gosh I want to have this and I want to have this and I want to have this and then you're like and I'm going to put it right here and you completely forget about all the stuff that's around it. <laughs> and like you're missing out on a, on a great opportunity there because there's so much that you know you could add in that gives it that lived in we actually know the town in the yeah. area kind of feel you know yeah and i i want to say when you're adding in your businesses you want to have you want to put your focus on the ones that are going to be in your short stories okay so we're talking about mm -hmm. short stories. so we're going to have these series that go on for as long as you want them to go on so you're going to focus on those those ones but you can always say that maybe there's a yarn shop or maybe but it none of that really matter you don't need to go into all of the nitty-gritty details of mm -hmm. just a random shop that you're not going to use in your story um you, you just want to make you as you're telling the story you want to have things that maybe make your story look and feel fuller and feel more real you don't need to worry about naming every single business that's in your town. I do not name every single business in my town. I just, there are many things that with the size of the town and the things that I have mentioned, we can get in our mind's eye a picture mm -hmm. of, of the other things. I don't have to say that there's a water company. I'm going to assume that there is a, some sort of water company or well water. I'm not worried yeah. about that. You know what I'm saying? Um, unless uh, one of the Bobby Joe, who is the the male main character, 
works at at the water company we don't we don't need to know that there's a water company we're going to assume they get their water from somewhere unless they're pulling their water up from a well and that could be a whole thing too especially on a farm which is perfectly fine so don't worry about the mm -hmm. the nursery. um if you if you have a bookstore owner and maybe there is a small small library and your your main character um is coming into town she wants to start a bookstore um and maybe the librarian is upset because the librarian thinks that you know you shouldn't you know you're mm -hmm. taking up my space then you can mention that there's a library over on on south south boulevard you know and miss miss cassidy is not fond of you you know what i mean <laughs> um, but only because mm. Otherwise, it doesn't really need to be mentioned unless you've got, you know, just use what you need. And then I always put it on the map. If I'm going to talk about it, if I've got a single dad and he's going to take his two kids to the library or to the library, I'm going to mention that there's a library. I'm going to kind of know where it's at. Are they walking? Because if they're walking, I need to know that it's in walking mm -hmm. distance. If he lives on a farm and they're walking, I'm like, good Lord, are they walking five, six, 10 miles to the library? You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. just make it make sense. And that's why you got to want to place where that library or that bookshop is. Because if you've got your people who live on a farm walking there, you don't want your, your people questioning, are they taking a all day trip? Are they making, you know what I mean? Like, don't have them kind of like wondering. So just kind of know where it is, you know, and, and put it on your little map if you do the map. Um, even if it's your map's just a paper with little squiggly lines and little circles Absolutely. to let you know that this is here and that's there. Um, and so you're not like, oh, it took, I just wrote that it took them five minutes to walk from the farm to the bookstore. Exactly. That is down. And you usually have to drive to town. So, you know what I'm saying? Make mm -hmm. These things will help it make sense. And maybe the coffee shop is next to the bookstore. Um, and they stop in to get a drink. Or there's an ice cream shop across the street from the bookstores. You know, mm -hmm. if it's a single dad story, these are places that you might need to know. You might need to know that there's a school. Where is the school? Is the school in town or is the school in the county? You know, anything that's going to be relevant. Those are the things that you really want to focus on most of the other things are just we kind of assume that it's there unless you tell us that it's not yeah so it's not it's, something to stress out don't stress out about it if you don't have everything in your town don't no mm -hmm. don't do that. <laughs> and i think that's a good point because we are building towns that continually build but also, I mean, if you think of life, like most cities, most towns, most, most places, they're continually adding stuff or things die and they close up or then somebody else moves in. And I mean, we had a poor restaurant down the street from us that's been like five things in six years. But, <laughs> um, you know, like, I think what you said is really good. Yeah, put a pen in it. Know where it's at. You don't have to mention absolutely everything. You don't have to know everything there is to know about it about that place, but also um, like because it's an evolving town and because you may start off with one series that is like, um, you know, all about your firemen, but mm -hmm. then your next series is about the bookstore people. Don't worry about the bookstore till you get to the bookstore series, exactly. <laughs> you know, unless like one of the firemen always goes to the bookstore because he has a crush on the girl at the bookstore, you know, you know that their story is going to come and that's going to combine the two series, if you will. Yeah. But like, look at it that way. You don't necessarily have to like have everything flushed out until you get to that specific series. But also at the same time, don't have one building in your <laughs> like in your story like you know like we i'm going to go back to your your tree farm don't just have the tree farm and like everybody goes to the tree farm the tree farm is great everybody talks about the tree farm like the person they meet at the tree farm the love couple meet at the tree farm and and they spend all their time and they walk around these empty streets and then they come yeah. back to the tree farm <laughs> And like every date they have is at the tree farm. Like, you know, give them some places to go. <laughs> give them some things to do. Maybe at a theater, maybe, you know, a, a restaurant or maybe people stop and get coffee on the way to the 
to the tree farm, you know, give them an apartment building um, yeah. where one of them lives, a house, something. Um, and just and just keep track of it. Um, I like to um, put it on a map. And again, I, I can show you a really scribbled map. I just like to put it on something. But then I will have a reference that I, so I know I've already mentioned that there is a bookstore so that when I go back seven stories later, I may not really remember anything about the bookstore. But as I'm writing, I'm like, oh, I have a bookstore. Look that up. Yes, it's called this. And this is where it's at. Um, because we'll go back to the firefighter one. If she says that the fire station is across town from the bookstore, and now mm -hmm. you're writing a bookstore series and the fire station's right next door to the bookstore, mm -hmm. your beloved fans who have, are just like dying and itching and scratching for that next book in the series are going to remember like that they built another fire station in a small town because this one's next to the bookstore and that one was like across town. So to having the little map, making the little notes um, when you do come up with a business, that's only going to help you as you continue on in your series. Yes. And also, as we're bringing up fire or firehouses, um, <laughs> think about uh, the kind of idea of, again, and I think we touched on this one of the previous episodes, when you're going into your emergency response people. Um, make sure that you're checking what size your town is so you know, you know, do we have a firehouse or is it a fire brigade? Like, are people helping from another county and coming over mm -hmm. to help? Um, do Is there a police office, you know, like, or do we just have like a sheriff's office that has like one or two deputies in it? Exactly. Um, always make sure that you are checking those because while everybody assumes that those are part of small towns, you know, a hospital or a clinic or something like that, just make sure you're making it to scale um, yeah. when you're going into your businesses because it's very easy to be like, you know, I live in a city. So any police office that I'm going to think of is going to be, you know, like huge. Like we have one that's like four stories downtown. Um, you and know, like that's some, not going to be in a small town. <laughs> right. And we have some that are literally just two police officers. Exactly. So, yeah. So always think of that. Now, the, I guess, caveat to that is if you have a small town and you're doing a police officer series and you probably would only have like two police officers, but you need four for the series, go ahead and give them four. <laughs> yes. And that's for, that'll be perfectly fine. Or maybe one of them is a sheriff deputy because um, the sheriffs, they work throughout the county. So that'll a, a pool where you can pull some more people. Maybe one's an EMT. If you don't, exactly. if, the, if the town is so small that your fire department and your EMT are all, all kind of combined into one. Um, so you can think about how you want to do that. And then if you yeah. change your mind later, maybe your town grew by 500 people. So now they're separating the fire department and the uh, medical, mm -hmm. the EMT. So that's where you get new people. <laughs> yeah. And also, and too, you town can grow, always... my town grows. I, have, I put my population on my newsletter. <laughs> you also can, um, what is it? Uh... It doesn't like if you want to do a firefighter story or a police officer story or an EMT story, but you do have like the small town, you don't want to make it much bigger. You can always have like just combine them all. And it's like a, you know, like uh, special services type of, mm -hmm. of thing. It's the same thing. Like if you want to do an armed forces um, series, but you don't want to do all army or all Marines or all, you know, Navy or whatever armed forces. You can do one of each. <laughs> yep. So, yeah. Um, I am going to, uh, because I think this is a good one. So I'm going to kind of put up this thing right here where Rachel, who came in, hello, everybody that's come in. We've got a great a uh, group of new people. Uh, but Rachel says it's a family owned bakery specializing in donuts and it's about to be closed by the bank only on Hallmark, uh, <laughs> which would be true. But this, uh, the reason I put this up is because how do you feel about family owned businesses when you're doing your series? Because I always try to 
includes some type of family owned, even if it's like, whether it's something huge that's family owned or mom and pop type of store. Um, yeah. I, I always try to, I feel like that kind of gives you a little something. Yeah, I love um, a family owned. I do family owned both for my pen name and with, um, with Ethereal Falls. Um, where the wish series is coming from. Um, so I will have a combination of people who just up and start something new. I have, um, because Ethereal Falls is a little bit magical, some of these people are pretending to be their own grandchild and they've actually been, it's it's not really a family, it's just been them. Because <laughs> they're like 300 years old now. So <laughs> it's a family business. Um, so uh it, I definitely like doing that. I also really like the person who's just come to town and just decided I like it here. I'm going to, you know, plant my roots here and I'm going to start my business or, you know, team up with somebody who looks like, you know, their business is kind of like tanking a little bit, and, mm -hmm. but I really like it. Maybe I can help that kind of thing. I love those. I do too. Um, how do you feel also is we're talking about this about using um because i think regina says something about there's she has a rule no big box stores um in her small towns which i think is a great rule regina uh, especially because most small towns they don't have them anyway but um how do you feel about using and i know we've talked about this personally so i'm gonna throw it out there where people can hear us. Um, how do you feel about doing, like say a Starbucks or a Barnes and Noble or, which could be considered a big box store as well. Yeah. But you know, like a little small, like that type of, uh, like maybe I, an offshoot of, of yeah, Barnes and Noble. I tend to not do it in my small towns. Um, and if I'm, if I have a, I do have a couple where there's like a city off you know, a little bit of ways because, you know, we want to expand our series if we want to. Um, if I mention it from a, in a big city, I usually don't say what the name of it is. I'm not going to tell you legally whether you can or can't because different countries have different rules. And I have heard people say different things. I have uh, heard traditionally published people who have said that they were advised to leave it out. And some were told to leave it in. If there's any problems, we'll, we'll handle it. We'll run through. I just don't because it's just me. And if I write something that a company or corporation does not like, or if I'm writing in a genre that they don't like, or something, one's offensive, you know, I don't want them to come back and say, well, you can't use my, our name or cease and desist or anything. I just don't want any other trouble. So I, and because I love world building, I don't have to, I don't have to use wall of world. I don't have to use Starbucks. I can, I'll just make up my own. And when I talk about places like that in the bigger city, I won't, I just won't use their name. You know what it is. Yeah. If I if I say we went to the super center and there's groceries on one side and bikes and car stuff on the other, you know where we're talking about, or at least one of the top three. There's number yeah. one, but you know, it, it it doesn't. It's so it doesn't matter. You know, my yeah. characters really don't work there, um, so it's it's not that big of a deal. Um, so I will not tell anybody legally yes or no. I have seen people say I did it in my trad pub and I had no problems. I'm like good for you. Um, I've heard other people say that their trad, uh, whoever they were trad pubbing with said, just leave that out or change it. And some said, we'll look into it and we'll get back to you. Might you maybe leave it. So take that for what you will. Mm -hmm. I've seen books that use that use store names in different places. Um, and, and it's been fine. So, but I just don't. I... I've used one actual, I think, store name. Um, and it was a grocery store and it was Piggly Wiggly. Uh, <laughs> and I, I felt like I was okay with it for two reasons. Um, one, because it, was, it wasn't in um, a... How do I say this? Um, a charged for or paid for? Or a, I, I'm trying to think of how you would say it. But it was like a free newsletter builder okay. type of a book. So it wasn't like someone was paying me to use the name or paying for the book. So therefore, I, 
I didn't make any money off of it. How are they going to make money off of it? Um, <laughs> type of a conversation. But also, um, I was like, everybody and their mother makes fun of the word Piggly Wiggly. Like they use it every place, all around, everywhere. I felt confident or safe that it's such a, a huge name. But um, I think, again, because that just established it in a you know, smaller off to the side type of story in something that I was maybe going to charge for. I might just say, oh, they went to the grocery store and let it go. Because now the people who've read the story understand that that is, you know, kind of like um, what the grocery store is in the town. Yep. So, um, couple more things and then we're going to hit the questions. Um, when you are coming up with the places, like I mentioned, we have the restaurant that's been five different things in six years. Do you sometimes reference the history of like, if the business has been there for a long period of time, or if it's a newer business, like, and they bought the building that used to be the um, old man winters, like, tire factory (laughs) type of thing or is it more just like whatever we're working with is what we're working with in this story mostly um if it's what we're working with in this story however if we're gonna meet a character i might say we're gonna go to um joe's barbershop that man he's been cutting hair for like 50 years to let you that it kind of establishes Mm -hmm. a little bit tells you a little bit about who you're meeting without sounding all uh, world build dumpy, you know what I mean? But then um, if he's going to retire and now his son or grandson who's taking over is about to get a story, that's when you're going to get more detail. But guess what? We've already, if you've been reading the stories, you already know a little bit about it, but also you kind of want it to be a little bit standalone-ish. So someone's starting with this story, but that'll be the story where most of, you know, what the place it really is mm-hmm. is going to come in, but anyone who goes to the barbershop is going to start getting little details about the barbershop. You know? Yeah. Okay. And I think last one or last question we're going to kind of cover is what do you do when, well, kind of a two-parter question what do you do when either a you have a a a business that just isn't fitting in or when you have a business that you've used it you're done you want to move on do you just kind of let those businesses die out in the background or do you bring in something to revitalize that life of it I don't worry about it again until, again, uh, something happens and I need a character. Um, and I'll be like, oh, I've got this place. <laughs> that's where that's where I can, and it's already been an established place. Um, I know about it in my own head. I know about it in my notes. I can bring that back up again. But just because I mentioned something in one story does not mean that now I have to mention it in every story. If it's a background place, I'm not worried about it again until until I need it. Um, but mm-hmm. it's there, and it's all it's cool that it's there. Um, if I need a scene to feel fuller, like I need people coming into the shop, I or, what, or whatever place that I'm currently working on i could say uh joe from the barbershop came in this morning for his cup of coffee you know and she's um talking with uh, with joe and then maybe joe tells the barista hey when getting a little shaggy there when you coming in for your next job something like that Mm -hmm. if i want to if i'm trying to make the scene a little bit fuller i have places that i can pull employees or people from or you know we turn the corner after the barbershop you know what i mean it's there yeah if I need to make the scene look, you know, to, to put me more immersive, to make the scene look fuller, to let it be more immersive. But other than that, I don't usually worry about giving lots of detail about a place until I need it again. It's there. The town's yeah. being built. I feel like as people read read the stories along, 
they're also filling in the the map of the place, you mm -hmm. know, and getting a feel for how big or how small it is and the people that live there. Yeah, I asked that because I have a I have a place in my my town that it was fun when I thought it up. <laughs> Now I'm like, eh, do I care? Um, does anybody care? Do we even know it's there? Uh <laughs> Someone will remember it's there. And it, I feel like it'll be funny because you, you hear about people will randomly ask. Um, I've heard about this from other authors. People will randomly ask about a place. And you're like, oh, I completely forgot about that place. And other people will be like, oh, yeah, I miss that person. Or when we never go there anymore. So then it might spark, you know, a little idea in your in your head. True. You know, that, oh, maybe maybe we'll see see if there's something there, a little something, something there. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I like having the places, you know. But sometimes the stories don't come to us or sometimes, honestly, we have moved on and we're like, I'm down at the dock. I'm ready to write my fisherman story. You know, um, do, do we have to go back into town? <sighs> Let's stay out of here on the river for a while, you know? <laughs> um, okay, so Sky, hi, Sky, welcome, um, said, so what would be in a tree form country? Like, um, what... Uh, so do you then go what businesses would say tree farm need to run? So um, I know for me personally, I would start thinking of what, yeah, I would kind of start looking at what goes in tree farm country or mm -hmm. like what's needed. Like, do they, like we have a, a, a farm here that also does Christmas trees. They have a grocery store on, on it, as well as they also have a restaurant. Yes. Our so sale. I maybe would start there. And yep, then I'd be sale. like, they have like, um, what is it? Um, tools. They might need gas. There's a gas station, <laughs> you know, or a repair shop or something. Um, where people, like I said, getting their coffee, where are they having breakfast? Maybe we need a coffee shop. Yeah, we have a couple. We have a couple of tree farms that we tend to visit. Um, I, do both? Both of one has a bakery. One has a full-on restaurant and a store. Mm -hmm. um, one of them has Christmas trees, and I think they also have the uh, strawberry patch or a pumpkin patch. And Ooh, if nice. I'm not them up. So then they kind of like bring people in in the fall. Then they bring them in in the winter, and then they bring them back in the spring. Um, I don't know what they do in the summer. I should probably look that up. It's pretty cool. Apples, place. maybe? Um, I don't I think, think I don't, no, ours does peaches. Ours does peaches in the summer. It's like maybe. peaches for part of the summer, and then we go into apple season as we get yeah. closer to the fall. And then we have, there's a one, it's a little bit further away, but there they actually have not just a tree farm, but they've got like an animal farm as well. Mm. And it's really cool. Um, I believe they all and so have then if you have animals farm, you probably need a veterinarian of some sort. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or maybe an animal so, or look up some look up some tree farms if you want to do a tree farm or whatever farm you're trying to do. If you want to do a pumpkin patch or a strawberry farm, look mm -hmm. up some popular ones in the area where your fictional town is going to be and see what they have. Some of them might literally just be the strawberry fields where they come, and we have some of these too, where they say, um, bring your bring your own basket bag bucket um and we'll guesstimate as you're on your way out we're like yeah that's maybe two to five bucks and then they have like a little picture of is this much expect to pay mm -hmm. you know, two to three dollars if it's this much expect to pay ten dollars and so nobody's mad everybody's like yeah i got this much and they're like ah yeah. that's ten bucks you know yeah and they're like just pick them <laughs> and that Eva, is uh welcome eva as well um that is the the farm that i was thinking of <laughs> when I said we have a farm nearby. So yeah. Uh, and it highly recommend. Love Eckert's. Um Sky also said my town starts with random things on Main Street with one shop, one cafe, one restaurant, one bar, whatever the first chapter works in, cabin, and Jesus help me fill the room. <laughs> and I mean, you know, sometimes it is. Um, I think that might be how most towns run just in regular life. No. Um, <laughs> Start up because someone said, I like it here. Exactly. Uh, she also added, but what if I want a mountain inside a cave under the sea in my small town in Antarctica? <laughs> uh, 
I think you could make that work. Yeah. You know what? If you, know, if it you believe in you. <laughs> it would probably be more like a snow. I, I'm going to look into that now because I'm like, I feel like you could make something like that work. Uh, Richard, who also came in, our friend from across the pond, said, pro tip, draw a map of your, your locations, right yeah, as I, I think agree. Mia was saying, put it on your map. So yeah. great minds and all. Yeah. <laughs> and gonna... Regina, hello, Regina. Uh, my town is rural Colorado, so Taylor's Feed and Grain is a big, big feature, and billionaires have invested there, so they su support a hotel and conference center, not too big, but right next to the old town. Um so, yeah, that's a good way to look at it as well, because what brings people in? What do what do your industry support, like uh, mm -hmm. the hotel or the conference center? Um, a great way to do that, especially if you're doing um, what is it? Um, family owned businesses is and you've got a town that's supposed to be like lots of years old. Um, do they own most of the town? <laughs> Uh, because a lot of times those those run in. So it's like, think of what a family that started a tree farm, what else would they buy in town? What else would they build in town? What else would they have in town? You know, they may have restaurants. They may have a grocery store. They may have um, a hotel. They may have a theme park. They may have, you know, whatever it is. Think about those type of things as well, because that's a good, good tip as well. Let's see how many times I can say as well. Uh <laughs> I'm going to see if I can do a share screen because I, I don't want people to feel like, oh, I can't do a map. I don't know. I love uh, Ben did I'm well. Uh, he called the gelato store where characters meet in Into the Void, the cold snap. And I wanted to highlight that because Ben is our lovely friend uh, and he's got a wonderful series out. I don't know the full story or full name of all of the stories, but if somebody wants to drop them in the chat, by all means, go ahead. Uh, Cause it's, it's a great story. We definitely want you to go ahead and support all of our lovely friends around here. Uh, oh, we always love um, Mia's maps. <laughs> not put together i'm sorry i thought i had one that was more put together but this was just like for to show people this can literally be your map and you want to put that the farm is here so you want to know where the lake is versus where the farm and the main mm -hmm. road so here's your main road um here's where the farm is um this is the barn where more at where the animals will be at here's where your or orchard is and then you want to have some people's houses and you might say whose house is what and that's the main house and you have a little cafe restaurant here on this farm you've got a little shop here mm -hmm. you have a guest house this is maybe that's a place that they rent out as a as an airbnb and the lake um and another lake house and hiking trails over here so then as you start to put those on a map Sorry, I didn't finish this one. But remember, I said roughly where the barn is. And then the orchard's here. And the farm is over here. And then the shop. I remember I told you that we had a little shop and stuff. The mm -hmm. three houses, the lake house, the main house. And so you can do your map as detailed as you want. But honestly, does this not help you know where, the, where everything is? Exactly. That's all you need. Yeah. Yeah, that the like if you want to say that we we walked past the lake to get to the hiking trails, that's where you went. That means you're coming from one of these places. If you're in one of these houses, you're not going to walk past the lake to get to the hiking trails. You're just going to go to the hiking trails from this house. So that's what your map does. Um, your map kind of just gives you an idea of as you're writing things so that you don't say that the barn is next to the main house in one paragraph and then later on in the story you say that the barn is way across the main road you know down mm -hmm. by the barn you know what i mean this now now you've told us that the barn is in two different places where's the barn exactly the map will help you keep it straight in your head where the orchard is how how far the orchard is from the cafe if you're going to mention that you know you had to drive down the main road to and then as you're driving down the main road you pass the orchard and make it so it makes it make sense and it doesn't have to be beautiful it doesn't have to be perfect you know it can look like that or it can start to fill out and look a little bit more like this Either yeah the one, thing a map will help you do is make sure that you aren't like he turned left to go to the orchard 
He turned yeah. left to go to the farm. He turned left to go to the main house. He turned left to go to the hiking trails. Like, left. Let him turn right. Okay. He turned left. He turned left again. He turned right again. He turned left again. Oh, because I have a tendency, all of my people turn turn right or left, and, and I have to all of a sudden go back and be like, wait a minute, where are we going? <laughs> they can't always be going to the left. Something's got to be on the right. I right. mean, just positioning wise, let's make sure they're not just always on the left or something. <laughs> So. Same thing as you start naming places. Like I just put was a restaurant cafe, but if I name it at Farmer Bob's Restaurant and Cafe, it is now Farmer Bob's Restaurant and Cafe, and I'll dot that over there so that I know. Yep. Uh, Richard, speaking of names, also came up with an idea. A bookstore slash restaurant could be called the Loose Leaf Cafe. Very Love cute. Um, as well as because you can always count on Richard for some funnies. Uh, <laughs> surely if you have a police station, then you need a donut shop. <laughs> and then I guess we didn't have one because, you know, budget. budget. Uh, <laughs> uh, Rachel also came in. Love it, Rachel. Uh, we already talked about this one with the family-owned bakery, as well as Angel Faye came in. Uh, I have a town in my novel and fire station, police station, and hospital, which always are good. Um, yes. the only thing I would caution sometimes with the hospital is once more, know Sorry. the sizing of your town, because not all small towns have a full hospital. Some of them have a clinic, some of them have yep. a urgent care, those type of things. And then if needed, they'll fly the person yeah. or drive the person or whatever. And that could hospital. be really cool and dramatic in your story that the helicopter mm -hmm. from the, from the city had to come in and pick up your poor person who got injured and now you're just devastated and she just and maybe like the the helicopter pilot and like the nurse that just started and has never met them like there's a connection yeah. there and oh. yeah. <laughs> what if that's the only time that the helicopter pilot and the nurse meet is at the is at the landing pad at the hospital and it's like oh, will they ever get together oh i like that um no, I'm not writing that down. Uh, <laughs> I know I can't. I can't add another story right now. Uh, Laura, who came in as well and was up pretty late writing, uh, which is awesome, Laura, mm -hmm. uh, said donuts and beignets at lunch. They sell Monte Cristos. Uh, mm -hmm. That could be fun. Uh, Rachel, who's always good for some names. The coffee yeah. shop is grounded for That's life. Funny. The bakery is batter up. We always <laughs> love it. Uh, mm -hmm. And JC also said, I love family owned things. In my small town, there's going to be a family owned ranch, which is nice. so cool. Um, mm -hmm. I do have a family owned ranch that might be coming up in a future story. Um, a supernatural mm -hmm. beauty salon called Fang Nail, <laughs> which is yeah. adorable. Um, and also Rachel added in, if I remember rightly, Dollar General is the same way, trying to make small towns a priority for their locations. So maybe mm -hmm. you don't have a Dollar General, but maybe you have something that is considered like a dollar type. Yeah, of, I know, have something or, I, have, I don't um, have my document open, but yeah, it's something like lower. Christ. Like a like the the it, I don't know if I call it penny something or something like that, but you know it's it's a mm -hmm. basically it's a dollar store, you know. Um, and Richard said in a book I've written but not published, I use an alternate version of popular company. So yeah, that is an option yeah. as well. Um, and JC had a question: How many businesses do you think it's too many businesses to have in a small town? I think it depends uh, on your town. Yeah, it, when it starts feeling unrealistic, and yeah. you start feeling like, are you in a city? Are you yeah. in a big city? This doesn't feel like small town anymore. Um, and it also depends on the type of businesses. Because, like, if you're adding in five or six um, hotels, you're you're closer to, like, a, a town. If you're yeah. adding or in... Or they're all struggling. Because yeah, who's like, to, yeah. in there? Um, unless you, unless it's it, um, like we have, uh, what is it? Lake of the Ozarks here, uh, mm -hmm. which some people would consider a small town or Branson, which some people would consider a small town, but their actual only industry is tourism. Yeah. So of course they have a lot of hotels. Um, but if you have like a random small town and you have that many hotels, now you're getting more into like city. Yeah. But if you are 
ha like say you have six mom and pop stores on the main road. Well, yeah, that feels small town, <laughs> you know, or like six restaurants that are right next to each other. Again, that could still feel small town. Now, if you have six bars, depending on your small town, <laughs> that and might if, be a big much. Yeah. So if you like, um, I have a, a couple of farms in some of my series. So if I've got a farm and I'm like, oh, I'm trying to make the farm a tourist attraction, there's not already going to be a bunch of hotels there. So if I, because otherwise, what are they going to go see? Um, but in my beach town, makes total sense. I've got a couple of hotels. It's a smaller beach town, but mm -hmm. there are a couple of mentioned and named hotels, but there's tons of bed and breakfast or and Airbnb type beach house yeah. things. Um, yeah. Same thing with the mountain. I do have a big resort and then there's other places that you can you can rent um and those are always mentioned yeah little Excellent. cabins, cabins yeah. that can be rented out yeah so as long as it as long as it makes sense you're good you're good uh regina said rechain stores i stay away from those the bakery coffee shop is called the muffin man locally owned most stuff is locally owned yeah a lot of i think especially if you're self-publishing we tend to stay away from a lot of um although richard Walmart. <laughs> uh, we do tend to kind of stay away from a lot of the bigger name things because you the last thing you want to do is lose everything that you've worked so hard for over something that you easily could have renamed. Um, so yes, or created on your own. We're smart. We're creative folks. We can do that. Yeah. Uh, Sky Winter also asked, what if the small town is part of a larger area that has a city close by and the fictional big store chain moves in? So not Starbucks, but Dollar or Star Dollaras? Dollaras? Mm -hmm. Maybe? And Star Beans. <laughs> uh, LMAO. Terrible names, but yeah. Um... I will say that in uh, one of mine, there is a big city is literally right, almost right next to, there's like some space, some farmland, and then the small town. They're very close within like an hour from each other. Um, in the Ethereal Fall series, I think that the big city is more, the biggest city is probably like three hours away. Um, so you can, you can put, you can put a small town next to a big city mm -hmm. uh, and this big city can start to encroach and people might not like it. That could be part of the conflict. That they don't want to break. You're, I you're think Hallmark does that once a month. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, uh, one of my favorite Christmas stories actually has one of the chicks from old school 90210, uh, like when we were kids and, mm -hmm. uh, she's from this small town. Her mom runs like this bakery or something like that. She dated this guy there. They broke up. She moved to like the big city and is like the head honcho of some massive company um, that wants to come in and tear down the house that her and the guy that she dated absolutely adored and wanted to turn into, I think like a bed and breakfast or something like that. And so she comes back to try to make them see that the good box store is a great thing and it's going to help industry and it's going to be great. And you're going to want to have us here because think of all the stuff that we can bring into the town and everything else. So, um, and then of course, like, you know, wackiness ensues, it doesn't happen. She realizes she, you know, wants the house and all the other stuff. And, and so, um, then it's all about them trying to then keep the big box store, yeah. you know, at the end, keeping them out of the town. So there's an easy way that you could do that. Like bringing in the big box, box store, making it kind of something and then maybe pushing it away or, or bringing it in and then seeing what happens with the industry and, you know, doing some fun stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let it come in and everybody's revolting because you were right. Now my store is going to shut down because nobody wants to come here to buy my mm -hmm. expensive cups when they could just go to the box store and buy cups, plates, tires, <laughs> and everything else. Exactly. Uh, Rachel, that was not the question I meant to click on. Uh, <laughs> but Donkey Harbor was literally named because the owner's pet meal would guard the place when they closed for the night, which is adorable. Oh, that is. 
I was like, okay, here it was. I don't know what I did, y'all. Um, <laughs> do y'all mix stores, i.e. the bookstore is Sally's Coffee Shop or the local hardware store that also maybe has good sandwiches? If it makes sense, I yeah. do. But I honestly, because I'm trying to get more characters in more places, I, I tend to just separate them. But if it's places that go together, like a bookstore and a coffee shop, I will put them next to each other. That way, I just feel like I get more story out of it. That's just a, from a storytelling per, uh, perspective. Uh, you can totally put it all together and have the bookstore coffee shop combo yeah. the, the, um restaurant gas station especially if it makes more sense for the story my towns aren't that small where it's like the gas station is the grocery store is also the mm -hmm. restaurant my towns just aren't that small um but you can totally do that mine aren't either um but i do like my orchard has the orchard cafe mm -hmm. on it um, and then they also have like a farm to table type of, of yeah. store there, as well as I think they rent something. I don't quite remember. Um, and now they are building or they're going into event planning for weddings because they had this yeah. like, you know, really cool building on, on the back of the property. Um, and I did that, A, because I have another series idea in mind, but also because I had a person coming in that I needed a job for. Um, and I mean, I'll, I'm a photographer. Who wouldn't want to get married on an or I'm dying for someone to get married on an orchard so I can take those pictures. I think they'll be gorgeous. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's sunset. Like, are you kidding me? And mine's a mountain town. So you add in the mountains behind the orchard. Like, Oh, uh, not one of my, you know, dream wedding shoots, but um, so like, that's one of the reasons that I kind of went ahead and added more industry into my orchard because it does make sense. But I yeah. do agree. Like, look at your town, look at what it can sustain. Yeah. If you have to have the grocery I, store, be it the hardware store. I mean, you know, hey. Yeah. And I, I kind of feel like the farms and things like that are a little bit different here. Farms and orchards are almost always, if they have a building and a restaurant, they're almost always used as a as a, an event venue. So um, for for some of the other short stories that I write under a pen name, that is exactly the, the whether it be the farm or the orchard, um, that's actually becoming the thing that they want them to be is actually part of the story and part of the fun um, is getting it to be um, the event place is part of the story. Um, I wanted to put this one up. Rachel said pasta factory was the locals equivalent of Olive Garden, except better food and more of it for the same <laughs> price. I remember the garden bread being exceptional. I don't know if we're talking about a real location or if this is something in a story, because we actually do have a pasta factory I've here never in Missouri. Heard of I've never heard of a pasta factory. <laughs> so that actually was getting ready to lead into my thing. I do have a tendency to Google to try to see if names that I want to use for a business, they may not be be in my area, but they could be in another area or even in another country. So do try to check that sometimes. Um, okay. It is a real place in a real small town. Um, <laughs> okay. Cause I was like, but it does lead into that uh, because you do kind of want to, if you are making up names, do check. Cause even though you're like, oh, I've never heard of this type of a place, you know, we don't have that, that store check because some other place might. Oh, um, so yeah. And also, fun fact: um, Cat Leo from Cat Leo Writing, her father owned or owns a Christmas tree farm. Last that even knew. So we have been kind of jokingly using the Christmas tree farm. But if this is something that you are considering, that might be a resource to reach out to. Yeah. So yes, um, definitely. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Although Sky also, when we were talking about it, she's like, ooh, gas station. My town doesn't have any of those. <laughs> and here's the thing. If you're writing your story, I will not know that your town doesn't have a gas station unless you tell me that in the story. This town doesn't have a gas station. I will assume that there's at least one. For real. 
It's one, um, of those, that's one of those places. I'm going to assume there's at least one there, unless you tell me for some odd reason your town doesn't have one. It's like, we're so small, we don't even have a gas station. Gas station. I'm like, oh, you're really small. Uh, thrift stores is always good as well. Like Eva said, there always seems, uh, or she always seems to add a thrift store. Thrift stores are good um, as well, uh, especially in small towns, because yeah. a lot of times you don't have like those bigger named type of stores. Uh, or at least you're trying to avoid those bigger name type of stores. So, yes. Um, <laughs> uh, it's okay. Esther said she thought this was later. Uh, but also been busy, super busy at work. So, yes. Um, I was trying to see if there's anyone. Um, do you mention churches or is that only if it's a religious focused romance? I mention a church if a church is needed. If it's, um, if it's needed or yeah. if there's a character yeah. that's specific or a family that's specific. But I don't mention the churches as in I'm not going to go into the particulars of the religion. Yeah. I don't think I've ever gone into the particulars of a religion. Um, like with the town called Christmas, I did mention the church more so because that town is so small that mm -hmm. the cemetery is right next to the church because that used to be like a huge thing. So therefore the person was going to the cemetery. It was right next to the church. Um, in Peach Ridge, we have Reverend Bernard, um, who fun fact, Bernard was supposed to be his first name and I just never came up with the last name and he became Reverend Bernard. So I don't know if that's his first or his last name, um, <laughs> but uh, he just, um, he's mentioned and i think the church is mentioned as sponsoring one of the events of the fall festival or the fall harvest uh but and that they have a sunrise service at the something up in the mountains what denomination where the church is all the particulars of it we nah nobody knows <laughs> so yeah uh, and do, it is true. Some small towns do have a high ratio of churches. It just depends on your yep. specific small town and what it is that works for you, how you want to do it. Um, I think that might be... Um, Sky did say, uh, Nia g goes, I think we should make this work. I love the support of my <laughs> delusional idea. <laughs> I'm always... Uh, <laughs> oh, I mean, we like to keep people, you know, happy. We want you to to get whatever it is that you need to to get. Um, this is always good as well. Colleges can exist without it being a college town. I have three hometowns in my actual life. I one has smaller colleges, one has a major university. The small colleges do not have college towns, do not a college town make. And it is true. Um, you know, especially like if it's a community college, oh my gosh, you can easily have those in a small town without it being considered a college town. Um, yeah. but you also can create a town around a college. And have yeah. that be your small town. So, yeah, you can do both. In Ethereal Falls, the college is across the river. So, technically, it's not. It it could be because most, a lot of, that's the only place where the college people will frequent. But it's not just college people frequenting this place. Mm -hmm. But, so I just put the college across the street from the river. And um, depending on here depending on where you're at uh, like the the college the university that my daughter went to some people consider it a college town and some people do not it kind of like splits down the middle like you hit a certain part and you can tell it's a call it's a college town that the college is not far and then the rest of the town looks like every other town in in um in north carolina the college i went to probably the same thing everything immediately around chapel hill it looks and feels like a college town but Cha chapel hill is so much more than a college town mm, but mm -hmm. everybody knows chapel hill as a college town yeah um rachel said i kind of want the scribble maps to be part of the books honestly <laughs> I'm thinking that's for your scribble map uh, there, Nia, which I think is adorable. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and yeah, this is me in my towns. Two wrongs don't make a right, but three rights make a left. 
Uh, so absolutely that is definitely how i tend to do my towns uh to the left to the left absolutely uh, uh let's see if there are any more uh oh my gosh you guys went all around the world uh, <laughs> Oh, Shannon came in. Hello. Uh, <laughs> and Rachel does have for your penny idea for the discount store. The deals are scary good, Pennywise. <laughs> <laughs> Which is very cute. Um, oh, I hope your uh, presentation went well, uh, Shannon. Um, glad you're relieved. I'm glad that you are getting it done. Uh, let's see. Oh, here's one more question. Um, how do you feel about a small town that ends up connecting to another small town, which of course would then branch off into another series? I'm okay with it. Yeah, I'm fine with it. Yeah. That's um, like a normal thing here. So. Yeah. And, and that's the thing too. Like a lot of, I don't, I think most of us live in what would be considered more cities. Um, even if they are smaller cities or like large metropo mm -hmm. metropolitans, um, <laughs> I don't know why I wanted to say. <laughs> I was thinking cosmopolitan, and it became a whole thing in my head. Uh, <laughs> but um, like when you get into kind of the heart of more states, a lot of small towns are like. Here's one, and then maybe five miles away, here's another one. And then maybe like th like three exits off the highway, here's another one. And then, <laughs> you know, like they do have a tendency to do that. As well as you can also have small towns that are in three different states, but because of the people, they all connect. So, yeah, you can definitely do that. Oh, good Lord. Okay, so we are <laughs> going to, because I think that's pretty much all the questions. Um, and also, whenever you're doing any of these things, remember, your work is also a work of fiction. Mm -hmm. I've seen several people who have actually put this either at the beginning of their TV show or put this somewhere in, the, in their book. Um, this is a work of fiction. You can have fun with it. It's just about how when you wanting to immerse your characters or your reader into the book, sometimes making something that's way off is just going to throw them out, but it's, this is a work of fiction. So we'll have fun with it as well. Uh, one last question. Uh, so what would you personally say the population cap would be for a small town? There You're are. Need to look that up. <laughs> um, because they can go, they can range from anything. I think it's like, some towns, even 50,000, I want to say, is like under 50,000 is still considered a small town. Yeah. Um, our, and census then, has, our census does have like a guideline. I, I've yeah. looked it up before. Yeah. Um, um, and like what was Nia was also saying, some, pl some places are considered a village if yes. it's too small. Um, yeah, it's and it's not small, even considered might, a small town. Yeah, you <laughs> might be a small town. And most of these things, we do call them small towns when we pass through that place that's got one gas station, that's the gas station, the restaurant, and the grocery store. A lot of times, that's not even a town. It's usually just a village. But I know here, we don't ever say village. No one calls anything a village. It's all We always just say that town, even though legally or technically it's not. Um, and then one last thing, and then we're going to wrap it up. Uh, in a legal state, I'd assume dispensary. You can do that. Always watch. And this is not saying one way or the other about how you feel about dispensaries or legalization or anything like that. Um, the only thing is that depending on the socio socioeconomic standing of a town, sometimes when you get into any type of legal or illegal substances, you run the risk of people assuming that either the town is overrun with that or that there's some type of issues or I'm thinking winter's bone. If you haven't seen the movie, check it out. Um, but you do run into that type of a conversation. So just be aware of that as you're writing it. If you want to put it in, 
put it in. If you don't want to put it in, don't put it in. Whatever your stance is, go with you. It's your town. <laughs> but I just want to put that out as a caveat, just so people have that in their head to think of. Mm. So yeah, um, we are going to go ahead and take off. Yeah, um, Sky said, I recently learned there are hamlets, townships, villages, and yep. towns. Exactly. Yep. So yeah. Um, we are going to go ahead and take off, Nia. Do you want to let people know where they may find you next? Um, next, you can catch me next week streaming over on Twitch on you probably Monday, Wednesday, Friday in the middle of the day. And you can catch me on YouTube on Tuesday night at 730. Um, and if you want to, you can sign up for my newsletter and you can check out my book, a um, The Art of Wishcraft. Wish. Oh. <laughs> I will be back next Saturday for Saturday Shorts um, on my YouTube channel. I really keep saying I'm going to get back into Twitch. I don't know. If I do, come find me. Um, <laughs> uh, and I think everything should be linked down. I almost said downstairs. Down in the box below. <laughs> Um, you can also purchase any of my books on uh, under TL Russ or Desiree, and TL Russ should have a release coming on Tuesday. So by all means, look for that. Heart Lies uh, is the fourth book in the um, Jewel Agency series. So if you haven't read the other three, go ahead and pick them up and get it in there. Uh, and I think think that's about it. If you have any other questions, always either reach out to us on socials or in the um, comment section and we will get back to you. All right, guys, have a good yeah. afternoon and a good week. Oh, and I also maybe we'll be back tonight uh, on um, yes, what's that girl? Morgan. Morgan, Morgan. Lee's channel. <laughs> Right. And luckily, her her name popped right up, and I was like, "What's her name?" Oh my goodness, it's Saturday, guys. Woo. Okay. Um, a Morgan's for uh her pop up stream tonight. So, uh, by all means, go check us out there and go subscribe if you are not subscribed. It's nothing personal, Morgan. I know I've been so bad, Morgan. You're just thinking I'm awful right now. Between yesterday and today, oh my god. Okay. So, <laughs> I got back. I was like, oh. My bad. <laughs> I know. I'm so bad. I'm so bad. It all fairs, my people, my family calls people girl all the time. That's like a compliment. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, guys. Oh Have a good afternoon and a good